Newton's first law told us you'll only get acceleration if there's a force on an object. What Newton's second law tells us is how much acceleration you're going to get for a given amount of force. Newton's second law in equation form says that the force equals the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Mass is measured in kilograms. Be careful, it's kilograms, not grams. That means that force is measured in kilogram meters per second squared, but that sounds kind of strange to say a lot, and so we say that a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. To use this equation, you plug the variables where they go and you solve for the unknown. That's really simple, but what if there are multiple forces being exerted on the object? Then what do you do? Well, then you use the more general form of Newton's second law, which is sigma F equals ma. Sigma, which really just looks like a capital E, stands for the sum of. All that means is you have to include the contributions from all of the forces. How do you do this? Well, you just make sure you plug all of the forces into the left-hand side of this equation. Say you have a box of mass M with a force F1 pointing to the right and a force F2 pointing to the left. We need to include both F1 and F2 into the left-hand side of the equation, but we have to be careful whether we should include them with a positive sign or a negative sign. F1 points to the right, so we consider it a positive force, since it points in the positive direction. F2 points to the left, so we consider it a negative force, because it points in the negative direction. Once you've included all the forces on the left-hand side of this equation, you set it equal to ma and solve for whichever is the unknown variable. If there's more forces, you just make sure you include all of the forces on the left-hand side. F4 points to the right, so we consider it positive, and F3 points to the left, so we consider it negative. Keep in mind, only forces go on the left-hand side of the equation, and the only thing that should go on the right-hand side of the equation is M times A. This equation works just as well for vertical forces. Make the upwards forces positive since they point in the positive direction, and make the downwards forces negative since they point in the negative direction. Set it equal to MA, and you can solve for the unknown variable. Keep in mind that the A in this case is the acceleration in the vertical direction since you included vertical forces. What if a mass has forces exerted on it in the vertical direction and the horizontal direction at the same time, then what do you do? Well, you still use the equation sum of the forces equals MA, but you analyze both directions separately. In other words, set all the forces in the y direction equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction or set all the forces in the x direction equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Be careful to include only vertical forces into the vertical equation. If the forces point up, they're positive, and if the forces point down, they're negative. Similarly, make sure you only include horizontal forces into the horizontal forces equation. Forces to the right are positive, and forces to the left are negative. Keep in mind that the vertical forces equation is telling you about the acceleration in the vertical direction and the horizontal forces equation is telling you about the acceleration in the horizontal direction. All right, last case. Let's say you have a force in the horizontal direction and a force in the vertical direction, but then you have a force in some weird diagonal direction. What do you do in that case? Well, you still do some of the forces equals MA for only one direction at a time, but should this weird diagonal force go into the vertical forces equation or into the horizontal forces equation? It seems like a vertical force because it points up, but it seems like a horizontal force because it points to the right. Well, we play the same game we played in 2D kinematics, which is to say we break this force into vector components. In other words, we figure out how much of this force lies in the horizontal direction and how much of this force lies in the vertical direction. The vertical component of this force, F3, is going to equal the total size of the force, F3, times sine of the angle. The horizontal component of F3 is going to equal the total size of F3 times cosine of the angle. Now we can include this vertical component of F3 into the vertical forces equation, along with any other vertical forces in the problem. Similarly, now we can include the horizontal component of F3 into the horizontal forces equation, along with any other horizontal forces in the problem. The most common mistake people make is they put an x-directed force into the y-forces equation, or they put the y-directed force into the x-forces equation. Or they don't even know what equation they're doing and they're plugging in things randomly, so be sure to keep all your x-forces separate from your y-forces.